So I know last episode I said that we were going to work on the shop system today, but there's been a slight change of plans. I thought it would be best to work on a coin system before we work on the shop. So this will be the last leader stat we make today. After this video we will have four leader stats. The points, rebirths, uh, gems and coins. What we want to do is first of all create a coin pad. So I've made a very quick building over here. It's not, it doesn't look brilliant but it will do just for now. I may fix this up in the point in the future where we can exchange our points for money. So say every 100 points will give us 100 coins. So what we need to do is make a pad. So I'm going to create a cylinder and I'm going to rotate it. Now, if you know what I mean by a pad, then if you think like uh, simulator games, when they've got the pad you can touch to open the shops, that's kind of what this is going to be like. So now we want to make a fairly big uh, circle here. I'm just going to bring my avatar in so I can um, get a rough idea of how big to make this. Maybe make it a little bit bigger, like that. And I'll just make it maybe a uh, light red colour. And I'm going to rename this part to coin pad. And this building here, I've grouped it all up and put it in a folder called Island One Buildings. Just so we can um, have all our buildings that we'll have on here. So the shop, this exchange building, we can have them all in one folder. So I'm going to put this coin pad inside this building. You will have your own building, but for now, uh, I've just created this rough thing to look somewhat nice. But I will work on it in the future. And we've got now got the coin pad. Okay, and that's it for there. Now under service script service, we need to create a new script. We will rename this script to exchange coins. Now in here, we're going to need uh, to call a function when the coin pad is touched. And in that function, we're going to need to convert the player's points into coins. First of all, let's start by creating a debounce, just so um, they can't keep spamming it all the time. So we're going to start by saying db equals false, db standing for debounce. We'll then say game.workspace, so we don't mean to do that, we can just say workspace dot, so that's the workspace, and we want island one buildings. Um, so at this point you're just trying to find the uh, coin pad in your workspace. So dot exchange building dot uh, coin pad dot touched colon connect function and then hit in here. So when we hit the coin pad, we're going to call this function and we're going to pass in whatever object has hit it. We then need to say if not uh, db then. So if um, if debounce is equal to false basically, then we can first of all set debounce to true. This will stop us from calling the code loads of times a second and glitching the coins and giving us thousands rather than hundreds. And now we can do our calculations. So first of all, we need to make sure that the object's parent is the character. Because say we touch this with our right foot, the hit will be right foot. So if we do right foot dot parent, that should give us the player's character, which if that exists then we'll be able to give the player their coins so we need to say if game dot players colon get player from character hit dot parent then and we'll say local player equals game dot players colon get player from character hit dot parent so now we've got a player variable and we can just say as we normally would player dot leader stats dot uh, coins dot value plus equals player dot leader stats dot points dot value so say we've got 10 points we'll get 10 coins now what you can do is maybe divide that by two so uh, if you so for every one coin you need two points which is something you can do if you'd like I'm just going to keep it as 1.1 1 .1 coin and then after we've done that we need to set player dot leader stats dot points dot value to zero now this is a very basic system here, but it works. Now after this um, if statement here, this the second if statement, we need to drop down, wait maybe let's say two seconds. This is the uh, amount of time before they can uh, touch the pad again. So they have to wait two seconds before they can touch the pad again. And then we will say db equals false. 
and this should now work. Now what we need to do next is under leader stats create our coins value. So we'll say local coins and paste that there. Coins.name equals and then coins and once again it will be zero by default. Now you'll see we've got four leader stats here. This is I believe you can only have four at most. I don't think you can have any less than that. So let's just add this to our data store quickly. Local save value four equals player dot lead stats dot coins. And now we'll copy the save value three, make that save value four. And basically we're just adding it all to our leader stats here. Comma player dot leader stats dot coins dot value and that's everything. So now if we were to test this, it should work. However, you're going to see what I mean now. So let's click play. You'll see we've got four things. It just gets quite chunky up here. So you don't need the points. You know, you know, unless you want the whole server to see how many points each player has, you don't need it. But it's not too bad because the names like gems and coins isn't, doesn't have a long name. Whereas if you had four really long names like rebirths four times, then yes, it would be um, annoying. But it's not too bad. So it's up to you. I will probably change this in the future. Oh, I've not actually anchored anything. Let me um, come out of this and anchor everything there. So let's make sure you've anchored it all so it doesn't all fall down. Anchor, if I could, there we go. So yeah, when we do our notation video, which will come up in the future, it will be the near future, we will probably change our points so that the whole um, lobby can't see them. But I still haven't decided on that. We may, may not. Anyway, you'll also see it says rebirth in and then loads of decimals. This will be fixed in our notation video, so don't worry about this. Um, basically, don't release this game until we've at least got past notation. Because when we do the notation, you will have to, if you change your points, you will have to wipe all your leader, uh, leader stats, your data store. Which means uh, every player will lose their data. So make sure you don't release your game until then. I'll try and get the notation video done maybe next video. Anyway, let's test this pad out now. So we've got 470, 480 points. I'm going to tap the pad. We've got 480 coins. You'll see we're really slow again. I can keep tapping the pad. And you'll see it turns it into coins. Now, if we just uh, stop the game quickly, we've got 24, 2, 5, 5, 16. And then we replay. It should have all saved. Uh, I'm going to have to replay it again because it keeps glitching. And we should have, what was it, 24, 5, 3, uh, 24, 2, 5, 5, 16. Yes, it's all saved. So that is exactly how we want it to work. And there we go. So next video, everyone, what I'm going to do is either the notation system or we'll start working on the shop. We'll probably do the notation system just to get it out the way. So I'll see you in the next one, everyone. Thanks for watching and goodbye.